what this slider does is it points to where the white bevels are. If I slide the white one all the way to the left as I did in the earlier one, it'll mean that all of the input values, all the output values are all going to be black. doesn't matter what the colour is on the original, it's all going to end up being black. In other words, I've made a solid black mask okay, or shadow uh, for that same area as the laptop. Now the reason I want us to do that and the reason I put it below is that now if I hold down my command key and my shift key and I use the down arrow on my keyboard I can nudge that shadow down a little bit okay so you can just see it creeping out from underneath the laptop and as I said before the beauty of masks is that we can now feather it you can see that if we overdo it it's not going to look very realistic if we just subtly feather it it'll probably look quite tangible as a shadow okay uh, i'm just going to use the arrow keys to nudge up and down just shift up a little bit so we can see it more clearly in fact while i'm at it i'm going to move it and the laptop up a bit because they're a bit low on the page so I'm going to move them into a better position up here okay so i've got that sort of layer there it's a bit strong i don't personally like it like that i think it's too black so i'm going to knock down the opacity to make it look a little bit more believable okay so it gives me the depth but it doesn't look too too strong the other thing i would say is being a bit fussy about things like this the fact that it's up the side here looks a bit odd so again remembering that we're actually blurring this dynamically take the feathering off for the moment what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make, in fact, I'll show you by hiding this other layer. I'm actually going to kind of cut off this side. Obviously, I'm, I don't really need a shadow for the side of the laptop. So I'm just going to delete. Control D, deselects. I'm going to do a similar thing actually over here. And the reason is that I don't, the lid won't need a drop shadow either. I'll paint in the drop shadow for the shadow from the lid which will be a bit softer okay now if i put the laptop back double click reinstigate the shadow maybe make it on this case five pixels it all depends pixel size will depend obviously on the ratio and the resolution of the original image but that now looks kind of like the laptop is sat onto a surface uh, the other tip that I've developed over time is if I move it up even more, you can see in this corner I've just nudged it up too. If I hit Control T, I can actually stretch it so we get a slightly bigger shadow at the front and a slightly smaller one at the back, which sometimes just gives you a bit more sense of depth. Again, it's just still a little trick that I use to change slightly the profile of the shadow. Okay. Obviously, the shadow here would look thinner because it's further away than it would here in the foreground. So I'm fairly happy that that's looking pretty good. Um, final thing I need to do really with this, uh, I might have needed to do some adjustment levels to the laptop, although I'm fairly happy in this case. What I would say is the screen area looks rather dark. So I'm going to select that by clicking on that layer, making sure I'm not clicking the mask, but the layer thumbnail of the laptop itself. I'm going to use the magic, sorry, the quick select tools, because see magic one tool. Um, and I'm going to just do an adjustment layer. Again, this time, let's use levels. I'm going to slide up the bottom end so that we get our brightness. Now you can see if I slide too far, it's going to get a bit sticky, but I'm going to slide to about there. I'm going to make sure my blacks are black. And then I'm going to slide up the midpoint a little bit. I just don't want to overdo it so that it ends up looking kind of dirty and I end up having to clean the screen, etc. I'm going to do clean the screen prior to taking the photo in the first place. So what I'm going to do now is just put in a blank for the area of the screen. Sometimes it's worthwhile while you're doing this to actually really beef up the layers. So I'm going to duplicate my adjustment layer so I can literally see the corners of the screen just made a copy of that adjustment layer at the moment you can see it's pixelating now because the noise that's in the actual original JPEG image is starting to come up as we start to 
make edits and I'm just going to work out roughly where the screen area is I have to guess this top corner anyway so I just want it to look roughly right okay and I'm going to make that as a selection I'm now going to bin that one which I just used temporarily and what I want to do in this is put a gradient in so I'm going to use the eyedropper I'm going to pick a grey from the background and it's not selecting for some reason so I'm just going to dial in a grey so I want to go from a grey and then the other one rather than pure black I'm going to go fairly dark grey use my gradient tool again I always use masks so I'm going to hit the new layer icon bottom of the layers palette you can see I was in a mask already so that's why my it wouldn't select the grey from the background. Now with Alt, I should be able to pick a colour and use the lasso tool like so. So what I'm going to do is just drag right across. So I, I just want to, before I do that, I want to make that a mask and then I can apply the gradient to the whole background, not just the masked area. Okay. beauty about masks is like the bottom here I realize that I've clipped a bit so I come along and I can take a, I'm a bit picky with me to can take it add a tiny slice more to the screen area by selecting the mask and filling it I don't have black and white in the mask. So I want to fill with the foreground colour, which is the Alt key and backspace. Another cool shortcut. Okay, so I've got the basic area for the screen as if the display is currently off. It's a little bit light. So selecting the layer, not the mask. I want to go to image adjustments. And let's go to levels. And I just want to put it to one side so I can see it. I'm going to dial down the midpoint. I want a hint of screen, not too strong a screen. And again, if it's too noisy, you could add a tiny bit of noise to it. Um, be wary in this case, I'm going to add only one pixel. In fact, you can even, I believe, add fractions of pixels. Just a little bit of noise. You can see when I'm zooming out, um, you can just about see that banding. Okay. Not going to worry myself too much with that. I could sort it out, but I will be most likely sticking pictures on here in due course anyway. Okay. So there's the replacement of the screen, and we've pretty much got the laptop good to go. I go just below. Remember how we made this shadow before? I just want a bit of a shadow at the back here because this flat would cast a little bit of a shadow. So again, I'm going to make a level adjustment layer. I'm going to dial down uh, the whites like I did before, move the white slider. I'm going to invert my mask, which is select the mask. It's obviously darkened the entire image. I want to do the opposite at the moment, I want to fill it with black. So I could either go to edit, hit fill and choose black. But in this case, I'm going to go to image adjustments because it's white and invert it. Which basically means select nothing. Then I'm going to take a brush and a white paint. Make sure my opacity is not too strong. I don't want it to be too crazy big. Normally I'd do this while with a Wacom tablet, it's a lot easier than it is with the mouse. You can see I'm just going to paint a hint of the screen back here. Okay, bearing in mind that I'm then going to feather it so it doesn't really need to be particularly smooth. And I can move it in a bit if it's too strong. And I've also got opacity. I just want a hint that that screen has cast a bit of a shadow it just helps cement the laptop and we're basically done with the first phase okay 
So we've cleaned up the shop. We've kind of got to a point now where I could put any colored background in. Um, all I did was I created a shape layer. Um, normally your palette may be in the long thin column like this purely because of my screen resolution. I'm docking it up into two so you can see all the items. Uh, there's a shape layer rectangle tool um, within Photoshop. So if I just basically create and drag out a new shape, it'll make a new layer. I can come in and put a color into that. So I think in the earlier example, we used a kind of a dark sort of subdued purple, a bit like this kind of color. Okay. Um, you've obviously got control of all your normal opacity. You can change whether that actually changes the tone or just affects the color. Use these layer blends. They're really good. Cycle through and see what looks great. For now, I'm just going to drop it in um, as normal and knock the opacity down a little bit. Um, so we have the laptop. We have some curves here darkening the background. Another bank of curves. Again, if these are too strong, just come in, dial them back a bit. Okay. You can always build up in layers. We have a shadow that's just below the laptop here. I'm going to change the shadow mode because sometimes, particularly if I put yellow in here, for example, this would look dirty. So often with my shadows, I like to change it to luminosity, which tends to take on the color of the background rather than putting black on top of a color. In this case, it will make the black behave like a dark purple. Uh, I'm going to do the same with the other shadow we just hand painted back here a bit. Just be careful, sometimes it can make it color a bit. So I'm actually going to undo that when it started to look a bit too purple. I've got my laptop there. Then we have an adjustment layer for the screen. Maybe that's a bit too strong. Let's take it down a little bit like it to look more natural and then we have our dark gray area for the screen itself so it's as if the laptop's currently turned off okay so you can see we're getting towards where we want to go you know ultimately this is the sort of thing we want to create in the next stage i'll show you how to create the reflection and how to map images to this